Our next speaker is the author of Foundational Falsehoods of Creationism. Uh, my first times meeting them and seeing them has been continuously on stage fighting uh, local, state, and nationally when it comes to education and when it comes to information on well, exactly what we're here talking about today. This, this, this idea of, of creationism uh, versus what we clearly see as evolution. Um, it's my honor to introduce to you our next speaker, Aaron Ra. Thank you very much, Eric. And why are we protesting something that we don't even believe in? I'm defending what I do believe in. I believe in truth. I believe that lying to people is wrong because people base their decisions on the information they have. If you give them bad information, they're going to make stupid decisions, like donating $100 million to build a boat-shaped museum dedicated to a delusion in which everyone, everywhere, every baby deer, every puppy on every continent had to drown because the wisest and most powerful being imaginable was pissed off at some little Middle Eastern tribe that he could have gotten rid of much more efficiently and neatly some other way, or because he's supposed to be an omniscient telepath who allegedly loves his children like a deadbeat dad who left for cigarettes and never came back, he should know how to set us straight a whole lot easier and better than having to kill everyone with his incompetence and lack of foresight. So say the sacred fables, written by nobody knows who, and they didn't know what they were talking about, whoever they were. Those fractured fairy tales assure us that God fucked up again, and that he had to wipe the slate clean, as if he didn't know in advance that would happen. Yet he had no better plan than that. Obviously, the story is completely bogus and impossible. We know for certain there was never a global flood of Noah's Ark. It's not just that it couldn't happen, but that even if it could happen, we still know and can prove that it didn't happen. This boat-shaped facade is just that, a lie. I became an anti-theist activist when a group of fundamentalists bragged to me about how their congregation had all voted together as a block, exactly as their preacher told them to, which is illegal and unconstitutional. The reason churches don't have to pay taxes is because they're not allowed to lobby for political candidates, though they do that anyway because they're headed by greedy, immoral, unethical, criminally corrupt, lying frauds and charlatans. It wasn't just that one congregation. It was a nationwide coalition of religious right megachurches, their pastors all in collusion to position Christian nationalists at every level of state and federal government, which is why our country is in such shit now. Their agenda was explained in a memo that was accidentally leaked to the outside world. It was a wedge strategy to first put evangelical Christians into as many government positions as possible, then to undermine public education, specifically by forcing religious beliefs into science, sex, and social studies classrooms, to teach abstinence only, creating a positive feedback loop, causing more children to have children, increasing the poverty rate of uneducated mothers, to undermine science education entirely, denying both anthropogenic climate change, because the GOP is owned and controlled by the fossil fuel industry, and of course to reject evolution specifically and scientific methodology in general, so as to mislead and deceive students into believing supernatural nonsense and Instead, then instill the notion of American exceptionalism, which is the myth that our government and our legal system were based on a covenant between God and Moses. And it doesn't matter how much evidence expert historians present to disprove that. Someone's, someone explained American exceptionalism uh, as it, one of these school board meetings by saying that the United States of America must always be seen as a shining beacon of what it means to be God blessed. So students are still taught that the U.S. never did anything wrong, as if the Civil War was just a matter of states' rights, as if slavery either never happened or the slaves were merely immigrant workers, or, as some Christian textbooks actually teach, that slavery is biblically justified and should be reinstated. Those fundamentalists were not just end times dominionists. That would be bad enough. I mean, why would you elect someone to look out for your future when they don't believe that you have one? Because any minute now, Jesus is going to come back and save us from our, ourselves and our disastrous decisions. Communionists believe that Christians should dominate and subjugate everyone else. Islam has a version of this too, albeit by a different name. And both say that heresy and apostasy should be capital crimes punishable by death, along with other so-called abominations like homosexuality. As some Christian textbooks even advocate the genocide of indigenous people if they don't accept Jesus. Dominionists want to take over the federal government, overturn our democratic constitutional republic, and establish a theocracy enforcing God's law 
the group I was talking to, were reconstructions following R.J. Rush duty at the Chalcedon Institute. He was bent on using American religious police to enforce Levitical law, which is every bit as bad and in some ways even worse than Sharia law. Imagine facing a death sentence just for working on weekends. These people bragged about how, how many senators had already come from the Chalcedon Institute. And they confessed their fiendish plan like the villain in a spy movie as if they were sure that it was already too late to stop it. I had to do something. I knew that the first line of attack was against science education, specifically evolution. And I knew that most people don't know anything about that because most teachers can't or won't teach it properly. Because to understand any aspect of science requires an investment of time, effort, and money in higher education in a relevant field. And then you have to be smart enough to understand everything, and most folks just can't do all that. They're not that bright. That's one reason why there are so many young people in churches more than there are in college. So I decided to make this information easily accessible and comprehensible to those without an academic background or prior knowledge, with not a lot of time for in-depth study, but maybe an interest in finding out what is really true. That's why I made my series on the foundational false of the creationism, because creationism is based entirely on frauds, falsehoods, and fallacies. The frauds of creationism include, believe it or not, the Loch Ness monster hoax, the fabricated footprints of the Kaluxi River, and everything one, uh, Ron Wyatt claimed to discover, including Jesus's still living blood dripping from the remains of his cross into a secret underground chamber and onto the Ark of the Covenant. Wyatt also claimed to have found Noah's Ark, but that turned out to be a vaguely canoe-shaped pile of dirt. They felt the falsehoods of creationism, you know, like that there are no transitional species or beneficial mutations, that macroevolution has never been confirmed, or that it isn't what it is, and that evolution is just a theory, not a fact. A few of the falsehoods in my list were based on logical fallacies, like the fallacy of projection, where believers try to project their own faults onto those who will not share them, when they accuse us of doing what they're actually doing, but that we're not doing. It's what I call the pot calling the silverware black. They're also desperate to create the illusion of false equivalence, as if you're just as bad as I am, or I'm just as good as you are. That's when we hear that their belief is based on evidence that they can never produce, or that science is a faith-based belief. So not only do we need to have faith in not faith, but a lack of belief is also a belief, and a lack of religion is a religion, and they tell us that rationality is irrational. Whatever criticism reasonable people apply to unreasonable believers, they just parrot back at us and accuse us of whatever they're doing. For example, a couple years after my series on creation and called out creationism as a lie, Ken Ham wrote a book with nothing on the cover but the word lie, L-I-E, written in large, bold letters. Now, I haven't read it because his book is smaller than mine, with only half as many pages and a lower rating with only four reviews to my 187, and his pathetic pamphlet will set you back $230. So judging that book by its cover, I guessed that Ken Ham's book, Lie, must be his advice to fellow creationists. How do you establish, promote, and defend pseudoscience apologetics organizations? Lie! That's how Ham did it. Same goes for Hovind, Comfort, Gish, Morris, and the whole troop of reality-denying pseudoscientists. But it turns out that he's saying that evolution and millions of years is a lie. So now we're just accusing each other of lying, just like we're both accusing each other of being irrational, dogmatic, religious believers. I know you are, but what am I? Because much of the pseudoscience apologetics is simply gaslighting, that what you're seeing and what you're hearing is not what's happening. It's fake news. Gaslighting is a textbook form of manipulation used by psychopaths, sociopaths, and all those with malignant narcissistic personality disorders trying to cultivate doubt by making us question our own perception, by using persistent denial and misdirection. And that's what Answers in Genesis is all about. They are a lie factory. And it's more political than you think. Religious propagandists don't care what the truth is as long as you believe what you're told without question, without reservation, and without reason, so that they can manipulate your physical and financial support and control how you vote. Unfortunately, if you're one of the few who cares what is really true, it is easy enough to prove which side has all the facts and which side has nothing but a fantasy. Jesus, Arn, that is fantastic. So for those of you who don't know, uh, this is live. This is a live event. Arn, that was, that was great. Thank you so much.